Today I'm with the students of the Amplified Voices program, a program I spearheaded to combat gentrification uh, in black neighborhoods from artists not of color who've been going through after the riots and basically taking advantage of the blank boards to put their own messages on there. And I thought those messages should be conserved for black voices since this is a black issue. So I kind of just woke up angry one day, hit up the Albany Center Gallery and was like, I want to do something about this. It makes me uncomfortable. And I know there's a high need with like the black community to like get their art out there. But basically it's just like a program filled with like maybe like, you know, 10 youth or less. And we're just out here just giving them the tools to paint and express themselves. It is an abandoned McDonald's. I'm not quite sure what happened. It was shut down. Uh, when I spoke to Tony with the Art Center Gallery, they found this spot because it's just like a blight, a sore spot in the neighborhood. And since we do want to bring more positivity and positive art and experiences to the South End, we thought that this would have just been a perfect, you know, building. I've been an artist since I was a kid. I've been doing it for about probably 20 something years. I'm 29, I've been doing it since I was like 10 or nine years old. My family's full of artists. My mom's a fashion designer. Uh, my dad has not really many artistic abilities, but all seven of my siblings are artists of some kind, whether it's keck decorator, cosmetologist, painter, sculptor, poet. So I kind of just grew up in that environment and I've, I've constantly been surrounded by artists. And it's just something that makes me happy and I heal from it and it's in my job. I work for the state. I'm a multimedia designer for the State Department of Education and Training. So it's just always been something I'm surrounded by and it's something that I take very seriously because it's so passionate and intimate to me. Art's in everything. We describe to the kids the first day, art's in your clothes, art's on the mass that you have, art's the building that we're in, architecture, there's so many pieces. There's so, there's so much art in everything that we do. It's not just one objective like kind of piece. So we basically just want to teach the children how to heal through art, how to use art as a healing device, how it can be a meditative device how it could just be an expressive device. You know, you could even mix type, we, ta we taught them how to mix typography and like poetry and like how art's just not a painting, how it's bigger than that. I think how COVID's affecting the art industry, that's a, that's a big one because it's, there's so many industries within like the creative field, but I know everybody's struggling a little bit. They came up with this design 100%. We were just there to facilitate. We're not there to control the message. We're there to provide them a platform so they can voice their message. The only thing I want to see in the end are these kids to be proud of what they've done. You know, I want the neighborhood to be proud of what they've done and I want the kids to be proud of what they've done and I want them to leave feeling like they now have the tools to live in a world that is pretty, you know, racist right now. You know, openly racist. It's always been racist, but now openly racist. You know, a lot of these kids were saying they don't want to see fires, killings, gun violence. They're done with that. And they're like six, seven, eight. You know, the fact that they're saying these things is incredible. Like it's insane. It's honestly it's like disheartening. So I just wanted to give them a platform where they can get those emotions out and heal and also see the beauty in their own neighborhood.